Hi, everybody. I am Howard Lindzen. I am born and raised in Toronto, so I had to learn French, and I've been unlearning it for 30 years. The, I lived in Arizona for 20 years, and now I live in San Diego. So um, I've, I've started businesses in three countries. I'm an addicted entrepreneur, and by style, I am a fast follower. I, I don't look at myself, I mean, there's a lot of entrepreneurs in the room. I don't consider myself someone who's going to invent something uh, like, like a Facebook or a Twitter. It's hard to start out as an entrepreneur thinking that you're going to be able to build a product like that because those are miracles and they rarely happen. But if, as an entrepreneur, you can focus on fast following, there's tremendous opportunities. From a momentum and trend standpoint, I think we're in a 20 to 30 year bull market for entrepreneurs. Um, the massive shakeup in the financial world and the globalization and the deflation that's happening in wages from a macro perspective and the deflation that's happening in computing and storage are gonna lead, as you know, to a ton of startups. So you're an entrepreneur like me, how do you start what do you focus on? You know, I've been doing this for a very long time. Uh, you want to focus on things that you are passionate about and that you know better than anybody. And for me, my passion is finance. I've run a hedge fund for 12 years. Uh, I watched, in the United States, um, finance and, st well, specifically stocks. It's a, it's a country that's crazy for stocks. And uh, so a little different than Paris, a little different than the rest of Europe. Um, although currencies are becoming a massive trend uh, in Europe and the rest of the world. But when I saw Twitter, uh, and I was stupidly, I passed on that investment. I was offered a, a small investment early on from Fred Wilson. I said, that's a dumb idea. But I said, uh, you know, if people could talk about stocks, Fred, that would be very interesting. So, stocks had an inherent built-in language, which was, if you say Apple uh, in the financial world, you know it's AAPL. So, it already had a natural syntax built in, and we came up with the dollar sign and figured out a way to pull um, contextually, context, contextual, message, contextual messages off of Twitter. We built our own platform, and so we would allow a community to develop outside of Twitter, you know, because vertical communities happen, you know, everywhere. And, uh, you know, something that we, I really saw was that social verticals were going to be huge. You know, Twitter is attacking, Facebook's attacking platform from a global level, but they are not experts in sports excuse me, in sports, entertainment, finance. And those are things that Yahoo, if you look at historically, Yahoo is a great business. Their verticals are fantastic businesses, whether it be uh, Yahoo Finance uh, or their sports uh, fantasy or classifieds. Uh, but building the whole platform and everything around it is very hard to own the whole thing. So we focused on finance. We have embraced the idea that people should be able to push to Twitter, push to Facebook, and with our tagging, we can pull it onto our own platform. This is our homepage, and uh, we've created our own algorithms to track trending tickers. And what's exciting is in the financial pages, if you look at the financial pages, whether it's Wall Street Journal or Financial Times, the same, over the years, the same type of legacy ideas continue to show up, meaning the most active stocks continue to be the same stocks, especially after the meltdown. And what we've done is taken a social way of looking at this. So for example, Lululemon, which is a stock I own, L-U-L-U, -L -U, is trending on stock twits. Meaning if you turned, if you went to any other financial site as a trader, um, you want ideas. And so the whole point about stock twits is to surface ideas that aren't going to be on the front page of other places, but this is stuff that traders are talking about. And therefore, by doing it this way, we can take our content, and it's content that other 
bigger distribution centers want, whether it's the Wall Street Journal or we just cut a deal with Yahoo Finance. So our streams are on Yahoo Finance and we're only a two-year-old company and it's because we're doing something different and surfacing different ideas than everything they've ever had. So you can click through, you know, if you come to the page for the first time, you see that it's, it's much like a river. The other thing that I love about the stream, and I've always loved this about Twitter and obviously Facebook figured it out, is if you go back in history, everything comes from the river. You know, and, and transportation networks, uh, trade, everything started from the stream. You know, things built out from the stream. And so with Twitter and, and Facebook doing what they've done is they've just re-engineered the whole lead gen engine to say, you know, you've got this little micro message and that's where all the nutrients are. And then from there spawns, you know, multi-billion dollar industries. And in finance, the idea is what matters. And in the financial vertical, it's not how good looking you are, except in my case, or in how much money you have, or what you, you know, uh, where you came from, it's your ideas. And the simple things of building a reputation um, can add, you can become a star overnight. And the financial industry never had kind of an American Idol, per se, or, or, or one of those events. If you turn on Bloomberg or, or, or CNBC and the financial networks, it's the same 20 to 30 people over 12 years who continue to be the experts. And what we've learned is in the financial industry, there is no such thing as an expert. So we're creating uh, a farm system through microblogging for people to create voices. And then from there, we offer a platform to let people uh, either build a blog, create a TV show. So we're building kind of like an ESPN for finance around um, uh, the microblogging platform. And I think one of the reasons people love microblogging, other than sharing, is it's a great training system to journal. You know, blogging's so popular, but microblogging became so popular because it was a great way to just kind of see in a, in a not completely committed way, whether you liked writing or liked following people or liked certain aspects uh, and can focus on your vertical. And from there then, you can commit to doing uh, a blog. Or if you want, build, you know, uh, like we do with Skype, we allow them to build their own shows. Um, and so everything, again, comes from the stream itself. So if I sign in, let me just sign in here. Maybe I won't. No, I'm not going to. The, the, um, so what, what we turn the stream into is we call it a human ticker. And for, in the 1920s, when the ticker came about, and, and the first guys that had the information that would come out on it, it was called a ticker. And the people who had that ticker had all this great information flow. They'd read the ticker, they'd see that J.P. Morgan or... Uh, you know, the bankers of the time, here's what J.P. Morgan's doing, and it came across the ticker. Well, over the years, that became something that everybody had. It became a commodity. And then with the advent of computers, uh, et cetera, and mutual funds, the ticker started losing its value because there was no context to what you saw going by. With, with the new tickers that you can create, we now know not just that Lululemon went by the stream or that Google went by the stream, we can attach a name, a track record, um, personal statistics. Everything can be tagged so that there's some context to not just, oh my goodness, Google or Lululemon or gold is moving, but the three guys who really move the market, at least on stock twits or, people, or it's three guys that people really trust and have a good track record, are the ones moving that. Um, so that's uh, what we did at StockTwits. Before that, I had started a company called Wall Strip, uh, which was a daily video show um, that CBS uh, purchased back in 2006. So I've always been focused in this financial vertical. And for entrepreneurs starting out, um, you know, I, I, I think this is, like I said, a great time to start. I think um, there are so many niches that uh, are left untapped. And I think Dave McClure said something really important. You know, not every business 
has to be a billion dollar business. If you can find a 500,000 to a million person market, um, that's a market that you can build a great business off. In the active trading business, simple research led us to show that there's over two million, just in the US, active traders. And those people pay two to $300 a month for data. So it's not an industry that's a billion dollar industry, but you never know until you start. But if you pick an industry that has a half a million, half a million paying customers, miracles can happen after the fact. So find slivers, uh, attack the slivers, keep yourself focused on simple, simple stuff, execute, get that first customer, and then you know, things can happen from there.